Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tag. I'm bored. I have an opportunity to work on a, a beauty and a piece of history as well in the same uh, same exercise here. So this one is one that uh, that just came in from Rick, and this is a 704 Bayless uh, big saltwater reel uh, made by Penn. It was one of their early editions. A couple of things that are interesting with this: uh, it's not a skirted spool. You will find that on some of the Penn reels. This one has got the traditional bowl with the spool that rides inside. You've got a bailless one, not a bail conversion. This is a bailless fishing reel. If it was a bail conversion, you would find a point opposite, about 180 degrees opposite, where that bail wire would lodge. In this case, it's not there. So this one came out of the factory as a bailless. And the other thing of interest is that this handle is a cone-shaped or coffee grinder kind of a handle as opposed to the more traditional pen bullet handle. So there's a lot of interesting things. I'd, I'm going to do some more research on this reel because, well, quite honestly, I think it's one of the earliest editions that they made of the reel. But uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about it. But right now, it's struggling. It's one of these reels that just, it's a grind to uh, get it to go. And it's not going because I'm assuming it's either no grease or dried grease in here. And uh, we're going to take care of that with this service. So we're going to start by removing the pieces and parts. We'll do that with the, start, uh, the knob adjuster up top. And while I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button to uh, alert you as to when I am posting and uh, what I am posting so that you can see uh, your interests. So this spool says the 706. So I may have miscategorized this as a 704. The spool is the 47706. So now a, a little bit more of a clue, although this one seems like a very large reel for the 706. Well, regardless, I can always learn. All right, this should come off by turning it in a counterclockwise manner, being careful because it's such an old and unique handle. I think this is the first time I've seen this type of a handle on the pen. So I, I think we're working on something of a rarity here. And then when you take those handles off, always make sure that you remove that little collar washer there. Two things, it's going to be pushing this gear out, so you want to make sure that it doesn't trap in that washer. And secondly, if you don't take it out, sometimes you're going to wind up uh, well, losing it. You're going to turn it over on the reel like I'm going to do right now to take the screws out, and the next thing you know, it bounces off your desk, or you don't see it bounce, and well, it's not there any longer, and then you go to put that um, back on, and well, it's a little bit of an issue. All right, that screw is a little tight, so I'm going to just use some penetrating oil on the other two as I work these through. The last thing you want to do on these old reels is to have, uh, have one of these snap in the case. Just use nice, even force. Don't, uh, don't go crazy. Don't go wrenching it or anything. Just take your time. Let the solvent do its, do its thing. I was just talking with Chris. Uh, in an email, he said how he has a lot of problems with the Mitchell reels having screws that seize in the side plates. And I would agree, I was agreeing with him. It happens a lot. Just be careful as you do that. We were actually talking about using a mechanical versus a hand uh, handheld screwdriver. I don't recommend the, uh, the mechanicals. Yeah, you can use it on some things, but sometimes there's just too much torque and it will actually snap one of those off if you're not... Uh, not careful with it. With those three screws removed, we can remove the side plate. And uh, the answer on this one is a little bit of both. So we have dried grease and we have no grease. So that'll be a cause for why the, uh, the reel is performing the way that it is. Let's uh, start by taking off some of the grease in the side plate. While I do that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, and if you leave them in the question section here, it doesn't matter which uh, comment section you use, you can leave it right in this reel. It doesn't have to be about this reel. And uh, maybe you want to just uh, make a comment like, hey, I know exactly when that reel was made. Well, you can help me in my research by uh, pointing that out. Uh, so yeah, leave it there. I try to answer the questions in the morning. So if you're, uh, if you're leaving a comment in the evening, I apologize if you expect a quick response, but it's usually the mornings when I am able to uh, to get to those. We've just removed the screw that is the tie-down screw for your uh, 
cross cross line attachment for that arm. And in case you're wondering, you probably haven't seen it on camera, but I do use a parts tray that collects all the pieces and parts that I take off so that I can uh, get them in a safe place and also know where they are when I go to reinstall. I'm going to grab that cross line arm now and I'm going to pull up on the axle shaft to remove that. As I pull up, I wanted to make sure that it slides nice and easy through that pinion gear. If it's tough to get through there, there's going to be two causes. The first cause is going to be that, um, well, you just got a bunch of dried grease on there and it's choking the channel. The other cause is going to be a bent axle shaft. Now, these, these rarely bend. This is a very heavy and durable metal. You're not going to find that on many of the modern reels. So as you go to remove those uh, axle shafts from the more modern reels, there is a chance that they could get bent. It also happens on the pens. I've had uh, quite a few of the battles and the um, pen fierce and reels like that with bent axle shafts. They're just not, uh, not designed the same way. They are more pliable. Is that a good way to put it? And uh, they can bend, so be careful. All right, I've cleaned the greases off of that. I used a mild steel wool to do that. And you can see that the main gear is already popping out, so that's always a good sign. We're going to take that main gear out. One of the things I should have done, but I didn't, and I got lucky, was I should have moved this anti-reverse dog to the off position. That's this way. For those of you that may have taken the reel apart and you're trying to figure out where the springs go, uh, it's a good time to stop and do that. And while I do that, I want to encourage you to take pictures along the way. Because if you do have a oops moment where something shoots or you forget how it goes, you can go back to your pictures as a reference point. We have a spring here. It's a 180 degree line with a loop in the center. One of these is turned down. The other is turned up. The one that's turned down goes in the wedge here. I'm not sure if it's turned down or not. It looks like there's a hole back there. I'm not going to remove it. It may just be a flat uh, tail end here. Either way, it goes in that little wedge spot on the reel. And the other one goes through this eccentric here, and you can see it's sticking out on this side. On your uh, anti-reverse dog, there is a looped spring. You can see one tag of it is against the side bar here, the side wall. It wraps around and it comes back on this side and there's an upward facing tail end that rests on the back shoulder of this dog. That's how that one's loaded. This case is clean. I don't need to do any cleaning in there. I am going to put a, a drop of oil or two or ten onto that dog post. I'm going to put it onto the eccentric behind it. Well, what we need to do now is come up top here and get that one out. That's a big one, and the chances are, if it's the 1960s, it's a U.S. thread, not a metric thread. I'm just going to come quickly and see if I can grab that with one of my um, ratchets, and I can. And let's get this off the board for a moment. I like, I like to, but I've got to use a ratchet in this one. You've got a deep cup there. If you were to try and put a traditional wrench in there, it's just not going to fit. You're not going to be able to grab that with the wall. So go ahead and find the ratchet. And then, as soon as you break the nut, I like to remove the rest of it by hand. Just like that. That goes into my parts tray. I'm going to remove the bowl. Just keep pulling up on it and eventually you will get that off. And you'll get that little keyway. Now notice on the keyway, that it's not round, it has two flat sides to it. And when you go to install, you're gonna to have to overlap the sides to your pinion gear shaft, and you're going to have to get it into the insert of this. Well, this confirms what we know. This is a, uh, a ballast reel right from the beginning. And again, this one has a marking underneath it that is also the 706. So we're gonna go with that that says this is a 706 ballast as opposed to a 704. All right, uh, there's three screws that are holding the collar on here. Sometimes this collar has a little ramp on it if you were working on a, a traditional bail setup. This one does not. But you can take the picture anyway here. It's always good to see. And one of the things I'm going to note here just for reinstall is that these two hole spots here are facing the uh, one o'clock position 
if that if that's noon you get the two to the right i'm pretty sure it doesn't matter which way you put these in because there is not a trip ramp on this but just in case there's no no harm in putting it back the way you found it i'm going to pull the three screws out now it's a flat bladed screwdriver and the three screws are going to be compared to make sure they're all the same size and they are and then once they are out i'm going to put those into the clutch tray so i don't lose those and next up then would be the collar coming off well this is always the part of excitement uh, one more comment before we go on there you'll notice that the holes for these screws are tapered so when you go to put this back in, the tapered side has to be up as opposed to the, the non-tapered side below. Now, this is either luck or not luck, but you can either pull this out or you can have a heck of a time trying to do just that. Well, there you go. Chris is sitting there going, boy, you got the luck. All right, there we go. Clean out the cavity. And you want to take that out for a couple of reasons. You want to make sure you get all the, the grease and junk and, and the like off of there. Plus, there's no way to get behind here to clean the rest of the case if you, uh, if you don't remove that gear. You also want to inspect the bearing. This side has a little bit of, uh, of pent up uh, grease in that, probably because the last time it was serviced, somebody didn't get behind there. This grease has been there a long time, so if I was to guess when the last time service this is, it would probably be quite some time now. This is very thick, muddied grease. I'm using the flat blade of a screwdriver just to pull that off. You probably can't see it in the, in the picture, I apologize, because some things are just, it's hard to do with the camera watching. And what I try to do on my channel here is you're basically looking over my shoulder as I service the reels that come into my, my shop for service and repair. So sometimes, well, the procedure will be explained, but the actual viewing might be a little bit tough because the reel service gets the priority there. All right, there's just a little bit left here. It's out of the way. I guess you could leave it like the last fella did, but I'm not kind of that person. All right, now we'll just clean up the rest here. The penetrating oil did a nice job of dissolving the greases on the base of the case here. And there's one more piece I just want to grab a little cotton swab with to, to get that out of the way. Very nice. All right, that's all cleaned up. Just to review, we have oiled these two pieces, cleaned up the case. A little bit of dirt over here. Let's get that out of the way. There's no better time than now to clean up around the base that you can't reach with the uh, scrubby pad that we'll use later. All right, let's go ahead and grab that. There's a, a whole host of ways to test the bearing. I like to just pinch it between my fingers and make sure that it rides nice. This one's riding nice. It has just some old grease on it, as you might expect. I'm gonna clean that out of the track. This is a shielded, not a sealed bearing. <laughs> These bearings are also very expensive for some reason. I guess they just don't make them like this anymore. But if you go to find the replacement for that bearing, it's going to set you back a little bit. All right, we're going to take our pinion gear and a hard brush, if you like. This is a, a Home Depot assortment brush. You can use dollar store brushes. You can use fancy brushes, or you can use a toothbrush. It doesn't matter. I want to make sure that all that dried grease gets cleaned out of the channel. And I'm noticing just where it would sit in with that main gear right below that. And it seems to be some stuff that's just dried there. Probably got thrown off of the gear, lodged up top, and uh, well, it didn't have any place to go, so it just sat there, dried out eventually. Just like what we were doing with the case, you can spray that with some penetrating oil. Turn it, put some pressure onto a paper towel like we're doing here, and for the most part, that's going to clean it up nicely. All right. So let's, uh, we know it's a shielded, not a sealed bearing, so go ahead and load that up with some oil. And uh, what we can do is, is get this ready for reinstall. So I'm going to take some fishing reel grease. I only recommend fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease, not because it's a pen reel, but because it's a fishing reel. And I recommend you do the same. I really don't have a preference for 
grease manufacturer, but I do have a preference for it being fishing wheel grease. All right, a nice coating of grease onto that. We're going to take the bearing, put that on. We're going to take the bearing now and place it back into the carrier. Make sure that everything gets seated nicely. Just like that. Now we can take that collar that we had. Remember I said I'm going to reinstall it the way it came and those two little dimples there, they were over to the one o'clock position. If you forgot where that was, you can go back and look at your picture that you took. And I recommend taking those pictures. I don't care what you use. Use a cell phone, use a digital camera, take a movie, I don't, it doesn't matter. Just use, use yourself, use your common sense here to take the picture so that when your mind forgets for a moment, or something goes shooting, you have a reference point. You can always get the schematic for this reel. Mysticparts.com has the schematics among other folks. That'll give you the exploded view, but sometimes it just doesn't show you quite what you took off. I'm a little bit of a problem getting this started. I will, I'm sure, get it started. There you go. Felt it. Finally, bite the thread there. One more. And we'll be able to kind of work this one backwards. So, it's important that if you're servicing a reel and you want it to last for a long time, just don't open up the side plate and squirt in a little shot of oil or smear some grease on there. I just had a, a Shimano come in exactly where, where that happened. And all that did was kind of camouflage a problem. It uh, wasn't performing well. And what happened was the grease covered up the dirt that was in there. And uh, I got one of these notes that said, well, you know, I just serviced it and it's just not running smooth. Well, the definition of service in mine was a little bit different. And what happened was, yeah, they serviced it by squirting oil into the cavity. But again, that just did nothing more than hide the problem. All right, now we've got it up. Remember what I said, there's two flat sides on this pinion gear, find it, and then match it so that the square fits inside the indentation. We're going to take the rotor nut now. It came off in a traditional counterclockwise manner, the old lefty Lucy. So it's going to go back on in a right-handed manner. And tighten that down as much as you can. Flop your drive so that you can set it the right way to tighten. Give it a spin. And that is a nice quiet reel with a good sounding bearing in there. All right, well, let's just continue this then. We're going to do the same thing here on the main gear that we did on the pinion gear. We're going to inspect all of the teeth. I don't see any that are chipped, broken, cracked, or otherwise. This is a little carrier on here. You may have seen this come off when you did your reel. If it did, it just sits over that stud there. We're going to take our brush and brush out the, the channels in between the teeth, or the valleys between the teeth. And we're going to grab our grease brush, and this one gets grease everywhere. It gets grease on the face here for that crosswind arm to slide. It gets grease in the teeth to intersect with your pinion gear. And it gets grease on the main shaft on the back here so that it can slide nicely inside that side case bushing, which is right there. Remember, your anti-reverse dog is set to off. If it was on, you may have trouble putting this in because it may hit the back of the teeth and get trapped. So make sure you're in the off position for that. Bring it in, and then what I generally like to do now is hold this. Go ahead and get the washer that goes behind the handle. Put that on, and then put the handle on. That way the gear is not going to slide out as you continue to work on the reel. There we go. And then we're going to take our axle shaft. We've cleaned the axle shaft and put a light coating of grease. Don't put a lot of grease in there. The reason you don't put a lot of grease in there is it's going to sh uh, just get scraped off here. It's a very tight tolerance coming down through that tube. Now we'll take our crosswind arm, 
you can put a little bit of grease onto the back end of this. We put the grease onto the main gear, but you can put it there as well. Line that up. Make sure that you're over the stud with your cross wind arm. Gonna drop this down to a lower position, like that. Then we're going to carry that through, and we need to align the hole in the cross wind arm. This is a little bit hard to do now because I put the handle on to stop everything from popping out. But eventually, I guess we can do it this way too. There's nothing wrong with doing it like this. And set the arm onto the stud like that. And now you need to line the hole in the axle shaft with the hole in the cross wind arm. And you'll know it's there. You can use a pin or something to find it. And we'll take our screw and we'll get that in there. And tighten that one down. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel. You know, we thought this pandemic was over a long time ago, and while well, it just keeps growing again. And uh, we're up uh, here in New Jersey, we're up to 3,000 new cases every day, and those are the reported ones. Who knows how many are, are not reporting. Those are the ones that have actually shown up in hospitals. And we do appreciate everything our first responders and essential personnel are doing uh, to help us get through this. Good news is that folks aren't dying as much. All right, I put a little bit of oil here because I heard a squeak. Let's go take a look at that. Boy, is that one nice, smooth operating reel. That's nothing like what came in here with the dried grease and the struggle to turn up and down. It's a testament to Penn's design, and it's also telling about how just a, an easy little tune-up like this I'll keep this real fishing. All right, there's three side plate screws we're going to put on. Then we're going to go service the spool up top. So Rick brought me a whole bunch of nice reels, fun things to work on. And uh, next up is going to be a damn quick. He brought me two. He brought me a super. And uh, thanks to Oliver out in Germany, Oliver says he has a spare main drive for this wheel. Now, I previewed that reel. It's got a broken stud for the uh, anti-reverse override, and Oliver was kind enough to say, if I want it, I can get it from him. And I said, please send that. So, I just can't, I'm amazed by the channel, its reach, and the kindness and generosity of the folks. Look at that. Beautiful reel. Alright, well, it's kind of bouncing around because it needs a spool. Let's go ahead and put that spool through the test here, make sure that the washers are good. You'll notice that we have a round spring clip that's sitting in a groove. I'm going to use my pick and one of these behind the groove kind of plates. I'm going to hold my finger so that that spring doesn't pop out and then I'm going to remove the spring. With that down, we can remove the, the gear stack. And these I think are, are, well, it's Teflon. I was going to say leather. I was wrong. The bottom of the stack is a hex. Clean it off, and let's get that back right in there. That's, so that's the base piece. If you had any junk or debris or garbage or grease or whatever inside the cavity, that's the time to clean it right now. We've got a Teflon washer here that's self-lubricating. You don't do anything with that, but that's next in. I believe that the washers that are used in this one are also the washers that are used in the Long Beach 60. So if you need to replace any window uh, washers, that's the place to do it. You can do metals as well as the, uh, the leathers. Well, we got leathers here. And then, funny I was mentioning it because these are, these are kind of stuck. Well, we know one thing for certain, that one was not uh, providing a lot of drag. And this one, I think, is the same. Well, those can actually be used again. They're, they're hard washers. And all you have to do is just get the junk off of that. And more importantly, you've got to stop it from sticking the next time. So what you want to do with that is you want to just use a uh, 
piece of steel wall and just kind of break off or buff off those little remains of the washers where they were sticking. How does that happen? Well, there's been grease on there and the grease dried and the grease acts like glue. So another reason why you want to service these reels before they break. Okay, that's that one. And what we're going to do here, continue to the install, I'm going to just put a light coat of, of grease onto these so that they have a little bit of slip and they don't dry out. We have another hex washer which goes in next. We get the top one. Now this washer looks pretty beat up, so I'm going to see if I actually have a replacement washer for the Long Beach that is that. We guessed before that it might work. Now we're going to check to see if it does work. That top washer is not going to be very effective. It's kind of bent in all kinds of positions. And uh, we, it's the same diameter. This is one from the Long Beach 60. It's the same diameter. I just want to make sure it gets over the spool shaft here. And look at that. It goes, that's a perfect fit. So, so Penn early on was using interchangeable drag washers for this series. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put this, I'm going to align this first. Put this, I need my clip. Sometimes I get ahead of myself here trying to figure out what to say and, and how to do at the same time. That clip goes back in and sits in the groove. While we have the knob off, we can take some rod and reel cleaner. I use pen rod and reel cleaner. Somebody was telling me they use soapy water. It came in one of my comments earlier. And uh, soapy water, I guess, is okay. But as soon as I saw soapy dish washing water, uh, that kind of raises a red flag. This detergent is a detergent, and it will uh, have an effect on getting your greases to dissolve, right? It's a degreaser, right? And if you dissolve the greases in your reel, well, you've lost all the advantages of everything we've just done here. The spool is now mounted properly. We can go ahead and put the adjuster cap on. Looks like that cap needs just a little bit of cleaning. So we're going to go back to this Q-tip here where the dirt is built up on those little valleys there. A little bit of a shot here of the cleaner. And then we'll give it a test. We'll see how we're doing. One of the things that's already passed the test is how the bail trips because, well, there is no bail. So I don't have to worry about that. All right. Make sure that the drag is tight. If it's not, continue to tighten it down. It's tight and back it off. You don't want to squeeze it out. And that's one of the reasons probably why that drag washer just sat like it was and adhered to it because, well, it was pressed in there like you would press in two boards that you were gluing together. Let's give it a ride. What a nice reel. All right, remember we have that in the off position, right? Because that's the way we reloaded. So let's put that anti-reverse in there. Beautiful reel. Rick, that's a nice one. Thank you for uh, bringing that in, letting me work on it. And like I said, we've got a couple more of yours that we're still going to do. We'll do one of those quicks at least, maybe two of them. And uh, we're going to have to wait on the one part, but uh, we'll see how we can do with that. There you go. That is your pen 706, if I misstated earlier. And uh, this one's ready to go fishing again. Uh, Rick, change that line. It's always a good idea to change monofilament when you service the reel. Get rid of that and put some new stuff on. So, to everybody out there who's been watching so far, I really appreciate uh, you staying tuned to this one. This has been a fun project to do. And I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate the subscriptions. To those that have subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Wishing everybody a great day.